Returning there at full back for the suspended Steve Hampson. And great relief in the camp to see David Hume fit. He's had ankle injury all week, had treatment, and thankfully it's responded. But I'm sure they'll have to look after that Kiwi pack. Coach Tony Gordon has brought in a scene for Marlow at prop after some outstanding displays in the club. Tony Kemp moves into full back, and regular number one, Darrell Williams, moves into the centre. It's a strong Kiwi side. The bookmakers really even money bets on both these sides and a big crowd but as you can see from the floodlights a very very dark very very damp very dismal day difficult conditions peter elder yes it's going to be a question of not making mistakes right keeping the ball tight particularly in your own defense getting out of trouble and putting the owners on on the opposition and that's the typical type of thing that's going to happen spilling balls in tackles and those that make the least mistakes in this match will probably win well we spoke to both captains in midweek and both of them were of the opinion the side that held the ball the side that controlled the territorial advantage they will be the ones that win so we'll see one test each Andy Goodway the great spur for some of these lads here like Goodway, Sean Edwards playing before their home crowd at, at Wigan Edwards that's a beauty it's anybody's ball it's still Great Britain this is a good start oh foul Phil Ford just couldn't hold it good cover there from the Kiwis numbers 11 and 12 Kurt Sorensen and Sam Stewart getting across difficult ball for Phil Ford to take a very good ploy here when Edwards put this high kick up because the, the fullback dropped the ball, picked up by Great Britain, half a chance here, and Ford just trying to change direction as he takes the ball. And a penalty from that resultant scrum. Kick to the Kiwis, number four, Darren Williams. We've seen him in the fullback position in the previous two tests. Good experience in Australia, this lad, and especially in the centre position with Manley. And that's a hard tackle. But I think uh, number eight for New Zealand, Brent Todd, he'll run all day, and so will this man, Fai Marlow. Been very impressed with this lad from Western Samoa to Kemp. Good tactics, this, sending... Uh, Alan Tate back there, Tony Kemp, seen experience with Doncaster. And that's what happens, Peter, from these long kicks, isn't it? Yes, and that was on the third play of the ball, Ray, the kick very early in the game, and that's what I think both sides will be attempting to do. This match, of course, not only the deciding third test, but it's also the start of Great Britain's involvement in the new World Cup series. Two points at stake in that World Cup series for the winners. And offside. Oh, and quickly taken. And that's a high tackle. Mike Gregory, the Great Britain's captain, a little incensed at that. I felt that Mr McCallum would have a torrid affair on his hands for the opening ten minutes. Andy Goodwear, a quick play the ball, and Sorensen, a very high tackle, right arm, right around the jaw of Andy Goodway, and he's gone for ten minutes. And the crowd are booing Sorensen as he's gone off, and this is a setback for New Zealand. Well, grandstand viewers heard what Mr McCallum had to say. He is a disciplinarian, he stands no messy, and sooner or later these players have got to learn. So, Great Britain now then, 13 men to 12. Good tackle there by number 12 for the Kiwis, Sam Stewart. Roy Powell had leg injury for the last couple of weeks not been firing with leads in the last fortnight but a penalty lying on to play the ball and I think this is good refereeing Peter from uh, Mr McCallum he's keeping both sides apart isn't he yes he's got to get on top of these players and stop them infringing at play the balls and getting offside and then we can have a real game of rugby league football but at the moment the New Zealanders are catching all the penalties Ray Yes, 32 years old, this lad from Sydney. 
flies back on Monday to an Australian summer, but I'm sure he'll look back with a little bit of pride on this test series. And Lachlan then, the first chance for points. A very cool player, this lad, Paul Lachlan from St Helens. Very rarely gets ruffled. 59 goals already this season. Usually a comfortable kick for this man, but in these conditions, pouring rain, wet underfoot, and the pressure, a difficult one. And that's it, he's missed it. So, still nil nil. Never the easiest of kicks, Peter, those in a test match, are they? The first one in very wet weather, a good distance from the post ray, and you've got to be fortunate if you can get them over early in the game because we never know how they're going to count towards the end. So, Roy Powell. Defensive, grafting type of player, Roy Powell. Edwards to Gregory. And I think we'll see Sean Edwards at the pivot all the time. There he is at number six, launching these forwards in the middle. But that's good tackling. Nine and ten there, Dwayne Mann. And they're seen for Marlow. Edwards again. Good ball to Lachlan. Kiwi player lying injured, but Edwards puts a good kick to the corners, testing Kemp. Strong player, clever player, this Tony Kemp, but not the fastest of players. And certainly not got the pace on Martin O'Fire. Kiwis holding the ball, they're down to 11 men at the moment, Sorensen in the sin bin, and I think it's skipper, Hugh McGann, having attention, as referee Mac McCallum, penalty to New Zealand, ruffling them up, and there is Hugh McGann, luckily he seems to be back, Peter Boyle, the physiotherapist, done a good job throughout this 12-match tour, well, he's, is he back, or is he going to lead him to the touchline no he's back it'll take a lot for Hume again the Kiwi skipper to go off Faimalo been brought in for his running this lad Peter tremendous player and I think uh, he's as good a front row as they've got New Zealand Ray he plays typically like you Waddell takes a lot of tackling and I think both teams are going to have to watch at these play the balls laying on which the referee allowed Great Britain to do last, last week, last test match. I don't think he'll let either team do it this week, this time. Phil Ford. Tricky player, this Phil Ford. Always likely to pull something out of the bag. And the players really making light of these difficult conditions so far. We had that spillage of the ball in the opening couple of minutes. That's a good run from Paul Hume, bringing the forwards in, taking it from the acting half-back position, making sure that New Zealand can't just fan out with these forwards. And Edwards, the kicking game again. That's good defence, and Tony Kemp's going nowhere. This is the place to play the game, in the Kiwi corners. A lot of work needed from these packs, Peter. Yes, I think it's going to be a typical forwards day to day. They've got to tackle and they've got to do the running as well to get the teams out of trouble. So they're going to be in fully employed this afternoon. Uh, and Hume McGann is already struggling, Ray. He got another knock there and he's just struggled back into position now. So it looks as though he's going to be a passenger for a while. The Kiwis, though, of course, coping with this 12 men, keeping Great Britain out. And that's a good kick. It makes Ford and Tate go back. And, but Hume again looks to be OK there, Peter, that was a good tackle. He followed up again, yes, he'd only just got back into the... It showed how tenacious he is, Ray. Yeah, he'll not come off. And, and being the captain, they need that on the field, because the captain is usually the instrument in, in telling the other players what he wants doing and passing on the, the coach's ideas. Great Britain never lost a test match here at Wigan against New Zealand. Uh, only been four, they've won two, lost two, and there's Sean Edwards. Now then, he's got Martin O'Fire on his inside. He must transfer the ball, and there is O'Fire. That's 
a try and a half. The showman supreme of rugby league, Martin O'Fire. He came in off that left wing. Uh, but it was Sean Edwards who made it. And O'Fire equals Workington Town, George Wilson's record in 51, Mick Sullivan's in 55. One of only three players to score a try in every match in a home series against New Zealand. 21 tries this season, and doesn't he just keep scoring them? Now, an opening here made, made by Edwards. Watch him go through with strength and speed. Beat off two tackles. Now, timing is the important thing. When has he got to transfer the ball? When would you transfer it? Now. Perfect. Gives Martin a fire, a clear run to the right. Brilliant timing by Sean Edwards. And Lachlan, brilliant timing again. The boot to ball, two points. Great Britain, 6-0 into the lead. And perfect combination there of Sean Edwards and Martin O'Fire. Sean Edwards coming towards you now. If you're the fullback, what would you do? Would you take Edwards or go for a fire? He draws them perfectly. There's no one near a fire. And you can't stop this lad with 20 yards to go with a gap like that. You could have driven a bus through it. And that was uh, good rugby from a fire again, uh, Peter, wasn't it? Coming in off his wing, he hunts for tries, doesn't he? Exactly right, he did the perfect thing there. He followed Sean Edwards all the way and got into the right place at the right time to receive that ball. So, couldn't have been a better start there for Great Britain. And a fire who just seems to pick up these records, joins Wilson and Sullivan now in that trio of scoring a try in every test against New Zealand in a home series. So, Edwards to Platt. I think one advantage this Great Britain side may have, um, Peter, is having uh, this good nucleus of Wigan players here playing on the home ground. Oh, that's right, because when they came out, Ray, they got a tremendous ovation from the crowd, and I think last, the last Test match at Ellen Road, they got superb support from the, from the spectators. Means a lot to a team. Tony Kemp, Doncaster, Newcastle Knights, and offside again. The second time we've seen uh, Mr McCallum give offside and in difficult conditions like this you don't want the packs on top of each other he wants a good open game and he's determined to get it i like the way too you know Peter, he's like one of the old referees he talks to the players a lot doesn't he yes he pushes them back he tells them what he wants and uh, most of the time they'll obey him if not they're going to get penalized and this is uh, this is where the players know where they are with the referee and that's what players like too good kick from darrell williams Brent Todd saw service last season with Canberra Raiders. Stewart, that's a good ball to Freeman. Well, looks a little bit of shadowing there to me. Dean Bell, he's used to going down that corner. Oh, that's a good pass to Iro, and that's a superb tackle. Superb cover tackle there on Kevin Iro, a big, strong lad. Very difficult to stop, 15 yards out. Good play by the New Zealanders here. They switched the ball deep, and they tried to get the three-quarters into the action, and they do with Black Bell, who hasn't had good tests up to now, showing his paces there. Gets the ball to Iroh, but a brilliant cover tackle there. Andy Goodway. Andy Goodway. I thought it was Goodway or Platt, one of those two forwards that's playing very well indeed. Another slip, but we can expect that. Freeman, now he's got to get these forwards moving. Faimalo, little Freeman, number seven. Todd. New Zealand seem to be concentrating at the moment on forward drives from first second receiver Kurt Sorensen back on the field now had his 10 minute spell Freeman again tricky customer good switch of ball to Sam Stewart the six tackle Mr McCallum raises his hand Freeman again that's a, oh, that's a good kick that's dangerous well taken I might have expected David Hume covering behind. Uh, That's Freeman. right, he's all over the field, Ray. He covers the gaps, he's tackling, picking up these stray balls. Uh, and the other 
secret is, if a ball does go down, is dive on it and make sure you recover it from the opposition. Be interesting to see if the Kiwis' fitness holds out. It's only been a 12-match tour, nothing like the first tour when they came in 1907 with 35 matches as far apart as Merthyr Tidville, Chelsea and Cheltenham, but those 12 matches have been against the top sides, the leading eight sides, and off to France on Monday. Just 15 minutes gone, six points to nil to Great Britain, the one off fire try. Already, Peter, I think Great Britain playing a good kicking game. Yes, they're kicking the ball away from their own 25. And the interesting thing to see, Ray, is that seven and eight men charging down the field to give a good defensive line to stop the Kiwis making early progress. Stewart. Good tackle from youngster there, Paul Newlove, only 18. Addison Rover centre. And a little bit of indecision. I don't quite see too much of Freeman at the moment. Uh, Freeman and Shelford seem to be lacking the link between the pack and the backs, Peter. Yes, I think with this heavy going, Ray, they're relying on the force to bash in and, and charge the way down the centre. Uh, and this is not the way to make good progress because the tacklers have got the advantage. Certainly the advantage with these two Great Britain lads, Paul Hume and Roy Powell. They'll tackle all day now. There is Freeman. That's a nice chip kick. Puts pressure there on Phil Ford. Oh, he's going in a dangerous position. But he's managed to hold on. Resilient character, this Leeds wing. Good tackle. One hooker meets another hooker. Dwayne Mann and Paul Hume. Well, Great Britain really, Peter, gone through five tackles from acting half back position. They haven't, they haven't carried the ball uh, in front of the break line yet, Ray. That's got in front of the play the ball, so they've got to kick and kick out of trouble and then tackle the New Zealanders. And that's a good kick from Lachlan. 60 yards there. And this man can't go in. I said he wasn't the fastest fullback, but he's certainly a strong lad. Todd to Williams. Now then, this is danger. Kelly Shelford. Oh, he's thrown it anywhere. The ball's out, there's Martin a fire again. It's a race. If he can control this ball, oh, he's missed it. Kelly Shelford just got back. The bad bounce of the ball, but he's given an offside decision, I think. Well, here was a great chance for Great Britain to go into an unassailable lead. And Martin O'Fire has a difficulty dribbling the ball, and the ball is played there by the New Zealander. And the New Zealand player playing it back gave a penalty away because another New Zealander, coming from an offside position, played the ball and kicked it out of play. So at least a chance for Paul Lachlan to increase that lead. But that just shows the danger of O'Fire, doesn't it, the pace? Absolutely, Ray. And how he didn't score there, I'll never know. He just could not control the ball with his foot. Us, Great Britain would have probably been another four points in front, at least. So, Paul Lockland again. Then. Much more difficult kick than that first penalty that he missed. Just ten yards in from that far touch line. Big crowd underneath the stand, uh, sheltering from the rain that's pouring down here. Greasy wet ball. No, struck to the left of the post. So still Great Britain six, New Zealand nil. Not the best of days for goal kickers. But of course, Peter, goal kicks can win matches, can't they? They can. Every time you get two points and you creep away from the opposition, they have a great deal of work to do to pull them two points back. Mike Gregory. coming into the loose forward position and the captaincy in the absence of injured Ellery Hanley. That's a good kick. It could go, it could go. Perfect timing there from David Hume. Mr. Reliability. Visited the hospital on Monday. There were doubts about uh, his availability. He'd been suffering a lot of pain recently with an ankle injury. 
Mercer coming in. Hume again. Looks to be fit now. Great stalwart of New Zealand rugby, this number 13, Hume again. 24 tests. Faimalo. McGann. This is good defence from Britain, Peter, isn't it? They're moving up very, very fast. Yes, they're playing the game that should be played, attacking the ball or the man with the ball, right, and stopping New Zealand from making progress. Well, there's one who loves, loves a charge. Kurt Sorensen with the second row. And Freeman trying a little cheeky grubber kicks to the corner, but Alan Tate up to it. Notice his left leg, left thigh there, heavily strapped. Had to pull out of the second test in training with a hamstring problem. But nice to see number 11, Andy Goodway, back in test rugby. Pulled out of the 1988 tour for business reasons, but at 28, still good test rugby left in him. Skerritt. <laughs> Quite a battle between Sorensen and uh, Skerritt, Peter. Well, Sk Skerritt's a big fella. He's had a groin strain too, so he might not be running as freely as he can. Oh, that was good rugby. Sean Edwards again. The short ball, putting Paul Lachlan through out wide. And there is Edwards again, first receiver. Directing operations to Skerritt. Powell, that's good rugby. Tate. Has New Love taken the wrong option? No, he's not. He's got David Hume with him. To a fire. Still going to David Hume. Alan Tate. Will he score in the corner? Yes, he does. Oh, a wonderful try. Support play at its best. How David Hume and Martin O'Fire got that ball away. I'll never know. I don't think Alan Tay could believe his luck. But that's what fullback play is all about. The crowd are delighted. He continued down that left wing. And as good a try as we'll see, Peter. Absolutely. And there we see Great Britain trying to put pressure on with Sean Edwards coming across. Pass to Skerritt who gets a good ball away to Powell. Powell gets it away to Tate. And now it goes to this magical fella from Featherston, Paul Nulov. Away he goes from the tacklers. And does he give the ball? He gives it to Martin O'Fire over the top. Brilliant tackle there by Bell. Gets it back to, to Hume. And Tate's speed now goes for the corner. True reward for a very fine try. Combination play by Great Britain. Super passing. We certainly won't see better rugby than that. It had speed, it had skill, and it had tremendous support play, didn't it? Now then, can Paul Lachlan just top on another two points? It's a good effort, it's got the height but not the accuracy. Ten points to nil then for Grey Britain, but I'm sure after 22 minutes, Coach Mal really will settle for that. Here we see the overhead pass there to a fire, but Bell's got the run on him and tackles all fire. But Paul Hume brilliantly covers the ball again and takes it, he's looking for support again, here comes Tate, round the blind side as we'd say, and now it's a race for the corner, nobody's going to stop this fella although Freeman tries brilliantly but he just doesn't catch him and good work from the uh, the touch judge Mr Haig, there, right on the spot wasn't he he was, because he could have given a sl slide into touch with those feet Ray, but he saw the ball was scored first, and just look at this man now, Trevor Skerry, pounding down this Bradford Northern prop 23 years of age, 6 foot 16 stones he takes some stopping only in his second test powerful lad had groin trouble early in the season a lot of best British beef packed into that so Roy Powell Oof. Kurt Sorensen, no mean respecter of reputations. Edwards again, going from the acting half back position. Helps to break up the play, helps to keep the Kiwis on the toes. 24 minutes gone, 10 points to nil. Mike Gregory. Edwards again. 
That's a good kick. It's a difficult kick for Kemp. He's lost it. Surely Iroh was offside. He is. Again, good decision from referee Mr. McCallum. And Martin O'Fire taking a knock when Tony Kemp went up for that ball. But it's one of those instinctive uh, decisions, isn't it? You, you just bend automatically to pick the ball up, Peter, don't you? Oh, yes. But the thing is, Brynn are playing the right tactics way in this 25. A brilliant kick here again by Edwards. And the fire has a 50-50 chance of getting the ball. And if he does, there's nobody to stop him. If he, if he... But there we go, onto his back. And we can see that Iro is in front of the play of the ball and therefore offside. And I think what we could see, Peter, as well, that Tony Kemp came down very, very heavily, didn't he? Accidentally, of course, but very heavily on uh, Martin O'Fire. He did. A fire in him clashed in the air and fell together, and the fire was at the bottom, of course. Jeff Plummer, the Great Britain physiotherapist, working hard. It's very rarely that you see Martin O'Fire injured. He very rarely misses a game. Sean Edwards just handing a word in. So again, the kick from Paul Lachlan already had four kicks at goal, just got the, the one, the conversion to Martin Afire's try. And the crowd suddenly go quiet. No, still not there, so Paul Lachlan vainly searching for form. The score still 10 points to nil. But the pressure on the Kiwis to do something now. They can't really just kick this ball either, Peter, now, or play for position. They've got to score now, haven't they? They have. They've got to set things up, Ray. Get down the field and see if they can't create something to break the British defence down. So far, they haven't shown very much in ideas as to how they can do it. Referee Mr. McCallum, a judging Skerritt, lying on it to play the ball. He is a typical Australian referee. In Australia, they certainly will not allow players to lie on the ball. They expect the player to get up to play the ball very, very quickly. I know it's a thing that he's been particularly spotting in this test series. But the players, Peter, are certainly coping with the, uh, the conditions, aren't they? They are, they're doing very well now, they've got into the rhythm of the game, right? There's not many drop passes unless it's... Uh, well, there's what, <laughs> one went there, that would have passed in desperation. It never went to the guy's hands, and, and this is the difficulty that New Zealand will face. To move the ball, they've got to put it to hand. That's what they call a commentator's nightmare, Peter. <laughs> well... Now then, Lachlan again. Oh, yes, he's got away, he's got a fire, but good held. In fact, there was a lot of fear about how this pitch would play sadly we had to cancel the curtain raiser between Durham schools and Rotherhide schools in uh, in London the little boys aged 10 and 11 had traveled all that way but um, at least they can watch the game again this is better from New Zealand now Shelford Good ball to Kelly Shell. Oh, that looks a little high. He'll be penalised. And I think just, just having a friendly word with him. Yep. Paul Newlove, I think, realised it. Youngest Great Britain test player ever. 18 years and 72 days, just beating Sean Edwards' record. So, coming up just for the half hour gone, and New Zealand got to get back into this game. Trailing 10 points to nil. Faimalo. Coach Tony Gordon put this lad on, this number 10. He's got an extra yard of pace that prop forwards don't normally have, hoping to find the gap. Sorensen. 
33 years of age, this lad Kurt Sorensen. Powerful war horse for New Zealand in the 80s. That's dangerous. Oh, that's brilliantly taken by, by Tate. Brilliantly taken. Had a dramatic entry into rugby league. This ex-Kelso and Scotland rugby union fullback. Great Britain again taking this ball from the acting halfback. I think we'll see Paul Hume go here. He does. And sensibly, Peter, playing the ball away from the post to the blind side. Yes, taking it, uh, as long as they don't take it right onto the touchline side, right? Because they've nowhere to go, only one way if he does. And certainly they'll be getting to a position to kick the ball now and chase downfield again, even though they might only take get to the halfway line or just over. <coughs> to Tate. Good kick, and now let's see if the chases are there. They are there, four of them. Well, there's a lot of indecision here in midfield from these Kiwis. I've been very impressed with the two half backs so far this uh, on this tour Kelly Shelford and Freeman, but just not operating at the moment. There is Freeman now out to Mercer coming inside to Shelford again. Freeman, this is better. No, they're not really going anywhere, Peter, are they? They're not. They're not making these short breaks and getting men supporting them, and that's what Britain have done. Stewart. Sorensen. That's better now. To Fimalo. That's good support play from Shelford. And the sixth tackle. The Kiwis must kick to Kemp. Sam Stewart goes racing upfield, puts pressure on Tate, but a good catch from Tate. Good hand off there from Andy Platt. Good running. Andy Platt there playing prop forward, but normally a second row. Got again that. Extra yard of pace needed in the Great Britain Rugby League pack these days. Gregory. Not really had the sort of breaks that we saw from him on the Australian tour, but a lot of responsibility as skipper. All oh, well taken by Kemp. Very safe, very sound lad and a very strong lad. Good run. Shelford. Looking for an English club, this lad. I don't think New Zealand will break Great Britain's cover down at first or second uh, man out, uh, Peter. No, I think Todd and Famolo and a man, the hooker, is not doing too much creative play at the moment. Sam Stewart struggling there in the play of the ball. He hasn't had a break at all or a run. So they find it very difficult to get through these British tacklers in the rook. Well, that was a knockdown and an obstruction, I think. Tempers frame, Paul Hume, fiery customer, brother David, little more control, settling him down. But I don't think referee McCallum will let that go without a word spoken, and he isn't. Yes, he was uh, signifying obstruction. So, is this worth a kick and goal? No, the Kiwis going on attack. And it looks Paul Newlove, I think, isn't it, Peter? On the ground there with ankle trouble. It is, and he, he had ankle trouble in the last Test match, right? When he came back to Featherstone, he wasn't fit to play because he had a strained ankle, and it looks as though it's affecting him again. So, the Kiwis now trailing 10 points to nil, desperate to get some points in this first half. Little Freeman coming more into the picture, that's a good kick, it's on a fire. Oh, well taken. Well taken, going backwards in these conditions. Just six minutes left in this first half, and I'm sure coach really will not want Great Britain to give any points away. They've done the damage early on.
Josh Garrett again. Back to Tate. Not a long kick. Now then, Kevin Iro. Great favourite here with the Wigan crowd, but... Probably the first time he's been cheered for being tackled on this pitch, Peter. That was a good tackle. And that's another six tackles. The ball hit the Great Britain man. Man. Dean Bell. Joe Lydon coming on the field here, slipping on, substitute. Not quite sure yet who's gone off, Peter, we can't uh, see. Looks like Paul Newlove, I think, with his ankle. So, Lydon had trouble with hamstring this season, not being fully fit. Can Great Britain get 40 minutes out of the Wigan centre there, number 14. And Great Britain not been in this game for 10 or 15 minutes. The Kiwis monopolised possession. Good game, the Skerritt. Powerful lad, gaining ground all the time. Just four minutes left in this second. Oh, that's a lovely chip from Edwards. Always thinking this lad. Certainly fulfilled all the promise he had when he signed as a schoolboy at 17 for £35,000. Good way. That's good play to Mercer. And Mercer's got it. Oh, he slipped. That just shows you how wet it is underneath that stand roof. Freeman to Sorensen. Still going. That's a good pass now, then. New Zealand have got a three to one, but McGann's dropped out. Has Bell got the legs on Lachlan? No, he hasn't. Long striding, Paul Lachlan. But the Kiwis. Well, Kurt Sorensen never looked where he was passing that ball. Stewart. That's a good ball to Kelly Shelford. He's got Tate to beat, he's beaten him. Oh, that's a, a lapse there for Great Britain. The Kiwis are back in contention. And Kelly Shelford, the Auckland captain, two tries to his credit, that's his third. Beat Tate easily there under the post, but a little slipshod defence there from the pack up front. I think things have been going too easy, too comfortable for Great Britain. And we're certainly back in a test match here. And the kick... A comfortable one for Shelford beneath the post. Been a huge success, this lad. Made his test debut in the summer against Australia. Well, Sam Stewart had nowhere to go here, Ray. Look, it's two men there, and he gets the ball to a brilliant supporting player, Shelford, who goes round Tate with the consummate ease. And with two minutes to go to half-time, that could not have been a worse time for Great Britain to concede the points. Shelford, not kicked a lot on this tour, just nine goals. No problem, two points, so Great Britain slipping up there. Ten points to six, and suddenly New Zealand from looking ill at ease, Peter, looking uncomfortable, coming back in this game aren't they yes they've also got a chance when the score is uh, is level Sam Stewart picks the ball up here from acting half back he's nowhere to go he's on his own two tackles Shelford got the ball and Tate easily beaten poor defence there by Britain yes I think relaxing more than anything and the other thing I'm surprised about 
they've stopped giving the kicks downfield to Paul Lachlan. They've gone to Tate, who's nowhere near as long a kicker as Lachlan, it is he? He isn't, not nowhere near. He's not getting the ball half as far. Uh, and that's going to be a problem for Great Britain if, if they don't keep these fellas at bay, Ray, and keep enough points, because they'll fight to the death. And these are big, strong forwards, no doubt about it. Fine Marlo, Sorensen, but I think uh, just 30 seconds left in this half. Seconds ticking away. Can Great Britain get back that 10 lead? Or fire, looking for half an opening. Doesn't see one. And I'm sure New Zealand will settle with this score now. Skerritt again. Into injury time now. Just had a couple of stoppages. That's a good ball. Lachlan can't get it away. New Zealand, I think, will hold this. They'll keep it in the pack. They do. No, they don't. Well, Ford knocked it down. But he's given the knock on. No advantage there to Williams. No, he's not. He's, he's given. Uh, I thought he'd given the knock on, Peter, but he's given. Uh, yes, they were both pulling, and, uh, and Williams there was pulling Ford back and stopping him getting to the ball. When Williams. Do, Ford knocks the ball down, and he does very well indeed. As Williams. And look, there he goes, trying to pull Ford back. There are one or two boos coming from the crowd at Paul Lachlan going for goal here. I think. Uh, because he's missed three or four already, but I don't think what the crowd appreciate, Peter, we are into injury time. We are, and the, op the option is correct. He has got to kick this goal ball, and, and let's hope he can put one over, which will give his, his, his form of goal kicking a boost for the second half. And two points, of course, would give uh, Great Britain that six-point lead, a vital lead, just ten points to six in the moment. But it is by far his most difficult kick. He's certainly got the power, it's just the accuracy. No, it's not there again. But it was well worth the attempt. And that's the reason why he went for goal. There's the hooter. The half-time. Great Britain, I think, deserve it in the lead, 10 points to six, but I think I would agree with the bookmakers, this is an even bet yet. It's certainly going to be interesting. We can catch up on some of the afternoon's football. I think we should go straight away to Loftus Road. And an update for the crowd. The last two test series have been drawn against the Kiwis. The New Zealand power there, as they say. Lots of support from New Zealand. Many tours come, up, come over here. The 1980 and 85 series were drawn, Peter. Could this one be? Well, it's very close, Ray, certainly. And now the New Zealanders have got back in with a sniff of victory. They've got to produce something to get in front of Great Britain. On the other hand, Great Britain need to consolidate and get more points, Ray, to be sure of winning this Test match. And I think how close it is, Peter, can be gauged from that try just two minutes from half-time. Just what? A momentary lapse of concentration from the pack and six points were on the board. That's right, we saw players on the Great Britain side just standing about. Uh, two men went to tackle Sam Stewart, but there was no one covering the half-back Shelford. Joe Lydon there, just to the right of Mike Gregory, number 14. Good cheer for him from this uh, Wigan crowd. Been troubled all season with hamstring, but I think our viewers on Grandstand will remember a few tries from this lad, perhaps none better than that try against Australia at Old Trafford in 86. A talented player, just perhaps lacking 100% match fitness at the moment. And certainly I think they need to be fit in this game, Peter. We've only had three scrums because of all this tactical kicking. That's right, and I think that uh, late in the game and, and games of, of this closeness are usually won in the last quarter when one side takes the ascendancy and we'll have to see if Great Britain can't just get this ball a little bit wider and get the three quarters running, Ray, and then I think they might find gaps outside against these New Zealand team. So, 40 minutes to go. Great Britain, 10, New Zealand, 6, and the British Cold Test Series at stake. 
a lot of pride and not forgetting two points for the World Cup series. I think I'd like to see Lachlan kicking out of defence again here, Peter. Well, they're certainly going to be kicking on the next play of the ball or so because they come up to six tackle and they haven't moved from outside the 12-yard area yet. To Tate. Well, this lad Kemp certainly having a fine game. Great Britain coming up to him, but letting him game 10 or 15 yards. Dean Bell. Never really shown his best form in this series Dean Bell but a very talented centre and I think a lot of tackling in prospect for both these packs again the side that commands the ball and certainly New Zealand have commanded the ball for the last 20 minutes haven't they yes they have and they're using it well they're giving this fellow Freeman a little bit of room deep to play with now and if it can get runners onto the end of him it might cause trouble Ray Shelford, that's a testing kick, well done by Tates. Good way. And Andy Platts, good run from Andy Platt, just making that seven, eight yards. Gregory. to power but certainly this Kiwi tackling now very sure very precise coming up in twos and threes and especially that hooker there number nine Dwayne Mann forced himself into this test team to Leiden oh that's good running from Leiden to Kemp and that's good support play virtually every one of the grave inside and notice it was number 14 Joe Leiden who was up there to make the tackle Williams and this is the area really where Great Britain should be playing Peter yes they've got to keep them pending the 25 and do all the tackling down here and stop New Zealand from getting this ball kicked down the field again and there's Leiden again another good tackle on Todd and another tackle from Leiden that's three tackles well certainly setting the example to the pack to Kemp all well picked up by Ford adventurous pass I get the feeling that Alan Tate's a little bit of trouble with that leg yes he's not quite getting off Ray but the, the conditions are difficult for him to push off and get into his stride I think that's the difficulty most of the three quarters are finding Skerritt crashing in but equally Crashing in there of the Kiwis. Kurt Sorensen again, number 11. And where are those gaps now that Great Britain were finding in the opening 20 minutes? They're not coming. I know it's very difficult in this weather, Peter, but I think we are attacking from very, very close in, aren't we? Yes, they're keeping the ball a little bit close to the centre, Ray, instead of moving it out to the three quarters and taking up the attack from there to move the ball out earlier, out of the rook earlier. And that they've got a better chance of getting three quarters into play. To Bell. Again, good tackle, good crunching tackle there by Roy Powell. Leads forward. A lot of hard grafting play going on here now, as Peter Fox said, the last 15, 20 minutes, it'll tell who are the fitter, who are the stronger. Very much like a boxing match, this, the early rounds to eight, nine and 10, and suddenly one side goes. Gregory, again, 
coming from the first receiver, looking for support, it wasn't there. The Wigan crowd, and now then to a fire. He's cleared again, it's a chase. This is the man that can win this game for Great Britain. And there's the man who can save it for the Kiwis, little number seven, Gary Freeman. A master scrum half, this lad. Service with Balmain in Australia, no wonder Kevin Iroh's congratulating him. An opportunity here for Great Britain with Skillet doing marvellous there to get a good ball to a fire or put the ball to the ground. Now, if he boots the ball, it goes to all the two guys. If he can kick it into the field, it'd have had a much better chance. But here comes a magnificent saviour for New Zealand in Gary Freeman. A tremendous saviour, that. He certainly covers back, never stops working, this little lad, Freeman. Both of these scrum halves, very similar. Hard workers, tireless. Gone to the blind, that's a good move. To Powell. Still going. Now then, the crowd getting behind Great Britain. First attacking position Great Britain have been in since that opening 20 minutes. Edwards looks inside. But this Kiwi defence, very strong, very committed. Edwards again. Playing the short ball to Platt, he's got the half break. As I said earlier, Got an extra yard of pace, this lad back can be deceiving as a prop forward. Britain again. That's good ball to Gregory. But that's a good tackle from Kevin Iroh. Coming inside, spotting the danger. But the pressure on the Kiwis. And that was a slack tackle, really. Joe Lydon should have put him over the touchline, shouldn't he? He could have had him the over deadline. the dead ball line there, Ray, and, or the try line rather, and, and made the ball dead, yes. But the, the idea was right, the kick from Great Britain was right, but he did not take his team forward. Great Britain got to keep the Kiwis down here. That's a good tackle from Edwards on Sam Stewart, but really... A standoff shouldn't have to be coming in at first receiver to make tackles like that. Shelford. Oh, he's lost it. And it's play on. Great Britain just let it go then. That was Strack. And he's knocked on. Fell forward, a little bit upset there. Lots of concentration, but Great Britain ball. Hume playing the blind side well. Skerritt never stopped going forward. Edwards, that's the game. Good tackle from Paul Hume, and he's lost it, but it's play on. And Great Britain really, Peter, not getting in at this loose ball at the moment, are they're they? Not, they're not, they're not. They're doing the tackling, Ray, knocking the fellas down, uh, dislodging the ball, but not diving on it and making it theirs where they would be in a very good position to set up good attacks. Paimalo getting through a lot of work. Sooner or later, I think, one or two gaps will begin to appear. That's a good kick, playing down to Phil Fortwing again, well taken by Tate. Oh, perhaps it should have gone. Perhaps it should have gone, but at least the ball's safe to Gregory. Um, we must 
They must have counted, what, 15 times going from the acting half-back position, Peter? They are, and I think the, the concern, Ray, that they're in front, they're trying to consolidate the ball, get it down uh, into the New Zealand area without taking too many mistakes. But the problem is, with 10 minutes gone, still only four points in front, 10 points to six. And it's a knock-on. So, Gary Freeman. Only the fifth scrum of the match. Kemp. Impressed this afternoon, this lad, Tony Kemp. Oh, he's running all over the place. He's beaten three men already. Good tackle by Roy Powell. And certainly when Great Britain have kicked to this lad, or whenever he's had the ball, he's run out and how strong he's looked. Just got to... Not to his back, Sam Stewart. Sorensen. Driving in, and I get the feeling that uh, these Kiwis looking strong, getting a second wind. They've weathered that storm on the line. Shelford. Powerful runner. Likes to size them off that right foot. He's got Faimalo. Oh, the referee was in the way of Roy Powell. But that's a tackle from Alan Tate. Copy boot tackle around the legs. Saved the try. Freeman, the Kiwis, man looking dangerous. And the sixth tackle coming on. Frantic defence there from Great Britain. Just the four point gap. Todd, Freeman to Shelford. That's a good kick. It's a dangerous one. Well taken. By a fire. I don't think Martin O'Fire will be bothered. What happened there? It's a penalty. Dragging him behind the line. But certainly O'Fire saved the situation there. He looks to have taken a knock. But when he's been put to the test, he's been up to it. Yes, here's a half chance for New Zealand on the sixth tackle. A good kick there by the stand of Farth, right through to the try line but Martin Fire dives in and saves a very, very dangerous situation. He's tackled there, you see, two New Zealanders dragging back over the line. And number 16, uh, Francis Leota, coming on for Faimalo. Keith England just slipping on for, for Skerritt. Number 17, Keith England. Leiden, a good dummy again, puts the long kick in. Now then, a slip by Kemp, and they've got to keep him down here. And Ford lets him go again. There's another 20 yards. Well, Great Britain can't afford to do this. A good kick from Leiden, and the Kiwis were let off the hook. Time and time again, Peter, we're letting them back, aren't we? We are. Uh, Fordy is having a little bit of a nightmare of a game, but uh, the substitution's interesting, Ray, because England's come on and he's an out-and-out -out tackler, is England. Whereas if it had put Hobbs on, we'd have been trying to win the match by going forward. And he's another kicker as well, which I think that might have been the ploy. But it looks like, really, has opted for the uh, points he got in front and he's just wanting these lads to tackle. Yep, certainly, the Castleford prop. Keith England, strong lad, strong tackler, but not a ball player. And in fact, I think that's one problem with the pack, uh, Peter. There isn't a genuine ball player in the pack, is uh, there? There isn't. All the lads are picking up and running from acting half back or going from first man. And uh, that's the problem. No run arounds, no going forward off a man that can handle the ball. But time with. Just 25 minutes left, Great Britain clinging to this lead, 10 points to six, and I, I do hope we, they don't go into the shell and just hold on to it. Dwayne Mann to Bell. I think, uh, as you were saying, uh, Peter, 
Hobbs possibly coming on could have lent a little bit more variety, a little bit more of the... Uh... It could, it could have put the ball uh, to men running and made a bit of a difference to the Great Britain side. But there's no question that Great Britain now, right, they've got to tackle and tackle like demons because this Leota that come on, the prop forward, he's another runner and he scored a 60-yarder at Feathers and went through the whole team. And I think that's what to coach Tony Gordon's doing. He's gambling on running, isn't he? He's, he's gambling. Got to, he's got to gamble now on getting us a try because uh, goals are going to be very difficult to come by because the, the defence of Great Britain is sticking to the task very well. So Keith England in the clean shirts, drives in. Just 10 points to six, just four points difference coming up into the final quarter of this match and this test series. Great Britain winning the second test, 26 points to six. But of course, New Zealand in control, 24-16 in that first test. Now then, will Kemp be contained down here? He is. That's a good ball. Oh, Shelf has lost it. Now then, Great Britain, we haven't seen them in possession in this half for a long while the crowd trying to get behind them Phil Ford now then can he do something this is what he can do he can certainly step this lad and that should give him the confidence England Great Britain now edging closer Edwards Roy Powell no slipped on that to Greasy surface. Edwards looking for the long ball to Lachlan. We haven't seen Lachlan in this game in the second half. Not really put much trust in the centres. Edwards again. That's a good ball to Tate. Just lost it. And good, uh, good advantage there by referee McCallum. Played advantage. And just look who's on the deck there. Little Freeman. Kevin Iroh. Some opinion would say that this man, Kevin Iroh, wasted on the wing, should be in the centre. Freeman again, trying to launch Leota. Good, strong running forward, this lad, Francis Leota. Todd. It's hard work, it's energy sapping, but it's got to be done. The tacklers have got to be put in. Well taken. Tate just couldn't get away. And this man Freeman is a real bundle of energy, isn't he? He is because there, on that kick, the New Zealanders didn't follow down. Uh, they've been going down in six and seven, and there only Freeman attacked the fullback. Which is a sign of both sides getting a little tired. Exactly. It looks like the New Zealanders are tiring just as much. So, the side in possession is the one that will win. Edwards. Platt. Edwards again. The six tackle, Great Britain have got to kick to Leiden. Oh, well taken. And a good tackle by Ford. Todd. Certainly since he's come on, Keith England, the Castleford prop, done a good stint of tackling. Dwayne Mann. That's a good tackle. That's a good tackle by Andy Platt on Sorensen. Going around the legs, he knows Sorensen's a big, powerful lad. And Tate. All on his own in no man's land. Oh, good run by Tate. That's a good run. 
That small aid, Alan Tay, we've come to know since his signing from Scotland. 20 minutes left, 10 points to six for Great Britain. Not beaten the Kiwis in a home series for 24 years. Keith England driving in now. And I do think this ball got to go out a little bit wider to Platt. Edwards again putting the kick. Edwards sensing, I think, that time's running out now. That's a good kick. Oh, fires there! Oh, has he? Well, why did uh, why did Martin O'Fire throw that behind him? Was he a judged offside? We couldn't see from the referee. <laughs> Certainly, O'Fire was there like a bullet from a gun. Well, this this ball was left floating, Rain. As O'Fire comes up. Nobody knows whether he's offside or not. I don't think he knew. But there, he's tackled and throws the ball away, trying to pass it to a man that wasn't really there. But, but why I don't left the ball anyway, I can't imagine. But I think that's the sort of mistake that will settle this, uh, this test series. One slip, one missed tackle. Glory for somebody and misery for somebody else. But it's good tactics, is that right? Great Britain have got to keep the pressure on and keep the ball down in this 25 line and kick it at every opportunity they've got. 18 minutes to go. New Zealand desperately striving down here now. They've got the runners on. They've been looking to launch Francis Leota in the midfield there. And Dean Clark. Number 15, waiting to come on, I think, for Kelly Shelford. Good tactics here by coach Tony Gordon, putting a fresh man on. Just perhaps that extra yard of speed that can take him through the gap, and that's a good heel, very good heel. Hume. Good ball to Tate. Gregory. Led by example, taken the ball up, but not really broken through the cover. Good way. And surprisingly, Peter, in such a tense, close game, we've not really uh, had any foul play, have we? No, it's been a very good discipline display by both sides when they've, uh, they've had to do the tackle in the right quarter, get the tackles low, give no penalties away, because that could have been fatal. That's a good kick again by Edwards, 17 minutes to go. Edwards knows this central park, he's played here for many years. Putting the kicks to the corners, making Tony Kemp run. Good tackle again. Certainly this 20,000 crowd have braved the weather. And at least with Great Britain winning, the bulk are enjoying it at the moment. Freeman, the long ball to McGann. Oh, that's a good run. Now then, Williams, he's got Nicola Freeman inside. Oh, Ford's missed him. And there is Francis Leota. It's still New Zealand on the attack. Now then, Mercer. It's desperation stakes. Nicola Freeman again. And suddenly, Joe Lydon claps him down. Well, that should have been a try. Certainly the Kiwi should have wrapped that up there. But it's New Zealand on the attack. Williams, a good high ball, or fires under it, and he takes it well again. There is a theory that this Martin O'Fire is weak on the high ball, but certainly he's done his job this afternoon, Peter. He's made a couple of dramatic saves, Ray, when uh, Great Britain have been in serious trouble. Well, the game looked all up there for Great Britain, but still they're in it. And here's this man of fire. Oh, what's he doing? He certainly, he's certainly exciting, but I don't think anyone with a weak heart. 
would be advised to watch this next 15 minutes. 10 points to six. And Great Britain clinging to this. Back to Tate. The kick. Not got the height. But it's got the length. Kemp. Now he beats one man again. He beats two men. But Edwards has him. Been very impressive, Kemp, Peter. He has, he's done some good running, some good feeling of the ball, and he's made tremendous headway for the New Zealanders. And you can feel the tenseness now out there, right? you can see it in the players. Both sides are desperate not to make any mistakes, and certainly New Zealand are coming strong and having a goal, although they're behind, are trying to get back into this match with a chance of winning it. Yes, you get the feeling that New Zealand have got a little extra yard there, haven't they? The, the pack seems just that yard quicker. But the tackling's still going. Andy Goodway, Mike Gregory. And these two half-backs, Sean Edwards and David Hume, certainly doing their stint. Little Freeman coming into the game now. Kurt Sorensen blasting through. And the sixth tackle. Will we see a high ball or a little grubber? It's a high one. Ford's on his own. McGann's got it. Oh, it's still there. Williams is in. And Moses in at the corner. No, no, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. It's a knock on. No one had seen Mr. McCallum. The calmest man on this pitch. This four years in the Sydney League. Well, we didn't see what happened first time here, but as the ball goes high, who knocks it forward? The ball goes back, Freeman knocks it back, but a British player touched it, that play on. I think that's a mistake by the referee, unfortunately. Well, unfortunately for New Zealand, I should have said, right? <laughs> now, now, Peter, no bias. The, I on the edge of my, my, my No there. bias, Peter, no bias. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly it hit... Uh, Freeman knocked it forward, but he, he did, did take it. I think Laughlin or, or one of the Bridget players knocked it back forward again and made play go on. Because these, the, ball the ball never took the ground, Ray. These are moments that make test matches. Oh, absolutely. Crisis of the moment, which everybody's at panic stations. So, just over 12 minutes to go, and it's Great Britain really clinging on here. Oh, and he's lost it. Leota. They can't give this lad a yard. He can run. I saw him score. 55 yard galloping try and hole. And the Kiwis in possession and pressing strongly. Dean Bell. Sorensen. Little Freeman coming more and more into the game. And Mercer moved in field now. Stewart. That's a good ball to McGann. Oh, he's got Mercer going for the corner, but he stopped. He's in touch. Mr. Mr. Lloyd's flag goes up straight away. Gary Mercer looked to be unmarked. And this is a beautiful pass here. A long pass goes out from McGann to Mercer. Mercer jinks at the corner. He doesn't go, and he steps into touch. Can't believe it in a test match. The, the glory for him, if he goes for that corner flag, if they knock him out, it doesn't matter. But all credit to Paul Hume, the hooker, he got across there, now then. Great Britain, not going very far, not going anywhere. Need to drive. Powell, he's lost it. And it's the Kiwi ball again. Well, I think uh, Mr McCallum a little harsh there on New Zealand, it looked to be advantage. But 11 minutes to go. Yes, he's gone back to, not giving advantage, but giving back to the first defence, which was Roy Powell losing the ball forward. Great Britain hanging in, Gary Freeman trying to get that ball in, he does do. Six tackles then in this sequence. Freeman, clever player, Edwards follows him, well spotted. Five tackles to go. Dean Clark. Great Britain under tremendous pressures here. A try and a goal. That's all the Kiwis want. Brent Todd. Dwayne Mann. We've already had two drawn series. Could we have a third series? No replay, of course. 
just the three tests the Kiwis off to France for a two test series on Monday ten minutes to go the sixth tackle oh oh bad kick now then here's a chance of glory for Phil Ford it's a kick it's a chase it's between Phil Ford and Gary Mercer oh he's holding him back surely that's an obstruction try oh surely that's a penalty try but Mr McCallum hasn't given it in the referee's opinion a try must be a certainty and Mr McCallum are judging that a try was not but he was definitely held back a good idea this a kick down the field when he could have been tackled inside his own half and a big race for the ball and Ford is going to win it and Ford is obstructed no question about it no question about it from the crowd I've told you exactly what the feel of the referee's decision. Well, that, to my mind, Peter, was definite penalty try. Certainly, Mr McCallum had to make a split decision. Great Britain are leading ten points to six, but could that decision in the final analysis cost Great Britain this Test series? The crowd going wild over a good pass from England. Paul Hume, and it's a forward. And suddenly, Great Britain, from one second in the jaws of defeat, looking to be going over. Freeman to feed the ball. He does do. To Kemp. Yes, Peter, I think that uh, try will be talked about for a long while to come. It certainly will because Great Britain had a very good opportunity of scoring the try from that Mowbray. But they're in the right area of the field now and they've got to keep the tackling tight, make no mistakes and not let New Zealand get out of this half. Eight minutes to go, four points difference, and now it's New Zealand desperate to get to the other end. Chants of Great Britain ringing around this ground. 24 years since Great Britain last won a Test Series, home series against the Kiwis. Can this international revival continue? Tate, calmly, confidently. Now then, Great Britain have got to hold this ball, they've got to get back down there. I even think, Peter, at this stage, a drop goal would be advantageous because at least it would mean that uh, New Zealand had to kick a conversion, wouldn't it? It would, but I'd prefer them, Ray, when they're going to this 25, to push the ball over the try line and let them make mistakes and Great Britain chase them and push them into making mistakes. Seven minutes to go, four-point gap, Andy Platt. To Edwards, Sean Edwards. Oh, but well contained. What a fine... Brent Todd coming in there, no need for that, but what a fine series this uh, New Zealand hooker, Dwayne Mann, has had. Very lively in the loose. To Leiden. He's having a drop. Oh, it's play on. Oh, he's going. Good tackle, Dean Clark. Well, that was an ambitious drop from 55 yards on. Yes, it was a wet ball, a long way. And I would have put the ball into the corner flag there. So, Kurt Sorensen. Now then, the Kiwis looking dangerous, but a good tackle from Paul Lachlan. Seconds ticking away, six minutes to go. Still Great Britain, ten points to six. Sam Stewart's looking for support. And doesn't he want to get back into this game quick? Freeman to Sorensen. And it's the New Zealanders still in control, still opening out this ball. Brent Todd. That's a good kick by Kemp. It's dangerous. Oh, well done. But it's Great Britain's ball. It was well done by the Kiwi. But Andy Platt was there on hand. Andy Goodway now. It needs a strong run. He's lost his boot, but I don't think that will bother Goodway. He plays the ball. Gregory. 
The crowd singing, getting behind Great Britain five minutes to go. Hume cleverly playing the blind side. Pushing the Kiwis back. Edwards to England. No points this half, but my word, no lack of excitement, and that's the sort of kick to Kemp again. How many times have we seen this fullback? Well, race up there, but this time the fall. Kevin Iro, one man who could do some damage. 15 stone. Still the Great Britain tackling machine continues. Todd. Sam Stewart, that's a good ball, he's launched Mercer again. Oh, but he throws it inside, and it's gratefully accepted. But it's a forward pass. And I think in the excitement, Peter, nobody can hear Mr McCallum's whistle, can they? No, as soon as the ball goes out, Ray, the crowd gets on the feet and the shouting and cheering, and we all forget about the referees in charge of this game, and that was a forward pass, he declares, by New Zealand. Three and a half minutes, and that's a good heel. Great Britain have got to hold this ball for six to... Oh, it's a knock-on. And Andy Platt says sorry. He looks upset, doesn't he? But he's given everything, that lad. He's worked hard. Now then, is this the last chance for New Zealand? Less than three minutes to go. Trailing ten points to six. They win the ball to Clark. Doesn't know what to do. That's the first tackle. Dean Bell. Well, I think Mike Gregory was looking for the ball. I think this will end up, Peter, with one huge kick towards the Great Britain line. Well, I think that's what they'll be playing for. Get as close as they can and make the kick go up again and see if they can get a lucky bounce. And he's lost it. It's a penalty. A penalty, poor Leota not playing the ball between his legs, and that could cost New Zealand this Test Series. Surely now, with just over two minutes to go, Lachlan to put to touch. These six tacklers will take us through. Great Britain tap the ball and away. And they'll drive to this corner. Keith England, what a fine job he's done. And I think in the conditions, Malwini's decision has been justified, Peter. Yes, he's certainly suited Keith England. He's done his tackling, he's taken the ball forward. And now Great Britain have just got to hang on to the six tackles, put the ball over the try line into the corner flag, and I think they can hold out then, Ray. Still moving in there. They'll keep this ball driving through the forwards. Then look for the grubber kick. Here it is, the sixth tackle. Or will it be a drop? From Edwards. That's a good one. A fire's underneath it. And so is Darren Williams. But a fire's there. What a good all-round game of fire's had. Man of the match uh, of Martin of fire. But what a good all-round game he's had. And that's a tackle. The Kiwis desperate now. They've got to move this ball about. Dwayne Mann driving in just over 60 seconds to go Great Britain to wrap up this British Cold Test Series 10 points to 6 desperation here from New Zealand and there's a fire again into the tackle grin on his face I think he can sense now that Great Britain might have done it or have they here's Dean Clark 45 seconds to go, the sixth tackle coming up. Huge roar around this ground. Freeman, one last chance. To Freeman again. And there is the sixth tackle. And that shows the desperation from the Kiwis, the first handover of the game after the sixth tackle to Great Britain. And surely we'll just hold this ball. Andy Goodway does. Great Britain have waited so long for success. We sense the victory 
in that third test in 88 down under in Australia and now the first victory over the Kiwis on home soil for 24 years 1965 there's the Hooter Great Britain are the winners a long time since Bradford Northern's Tommy Smears led Great Britain the skipper in 65. Delight on man of the match, Martin O'Fire's face. Two convincing wins over France last season. And now a win. And they were the men who set Great Britain on the way. That Edwards break, the O'Fire finish. It's been a frustrating 24 years, the most barren spell in British rugby league history. But certainly, they've contributed so much to this afternoon. The Kiwis have also contributed, and Great Britain, I'm sure, a confidence boost for the tour to New Zealand and Papua New Guinea this summer. And there's the man, Sean Edwards, dropped for the first test, brought back as the man of the match in the second, and then, for me, the man who surprised the gap open for that Martin O'Fire try. The teams waiting for the presentation, but certainly, Peter, it's been an absorbing series, hasn't it? Exactly, Ray. The uh, New Zealand had a great first test. Great Britain came back with a 12-man victory in the second test to win brilliantly from uh, a disadvantageous position. And in this test match, it could have gone either way, but Britain got a brilliant start to the match. And there they go. The teams led by Mike Gregory going up to receive the British Coal Trophy from Mr Northard, the chairman of British Coal. And isn't he delighted? A kiss of the trophy, a wave to the crowd. And I think those smiles in the crowd indicate how long we've waited for this. Paul Lachlan, good defensive game. Sean Edwards, a creative player. And Kelvin Skenny, what a good first half he had. Andy Platt swapped his jersey for a Kiwi, Joe Lydon, nice to see him back in Test Rugby again. Andy Goodway, one of young Sung heroes here. Alan Tate, so steady, so strong at fullback. And Paul Hume and David Hume, these two Hume brothers, Mr Indestructible. They tackled, they work hard, and man of the match, Martin O'Fire. That wonderful try, but superb catching and tackling today, Roy Powell and the man who's had a good series, Greg McCallum, but no doubt about it, hard-earned win, and who says we can't beat something...